In the Kalinga province, there was a fascinating discovery of prehistoric humans in the Philippines along with a butchered rhinoceros. But what's surprising was they estimated their existence to be 50,000 years ago, a bit later than Homo sapiens. So they are a bit younger than the Homo sapiens counterpart. These are the fossils that they have found and you can compare Homo luzonensis to Neanderthals, Homo sapiens. This is the image of the Homo luzonensis and it can be surely proud that our archaeologists can help in discovering the mystery of our origins. But how can archaeologists find out the age of these fossils? How did they come with the conclusion that it's 50,000 years ago? Believe it or not, there are both traditional and technological ways of determining the age of fossils. And fossils are located on the rocks. How do we estimate the age of these fossils? How do we chronologize them? Welcome to the topic relative and absolute dating of Earth and Life Science Rewind with your viewers for Earth and Life Science. Senior high school students, I am Teacher Guillen, and welcome to Earth and Life Science Rewind. Video reviewers for Earth and Life Science subject. In this video reviewer, we will discuss the different methods of dating or determining the age of stratified rocks through relative and absolute dating. What is dating exactly in the field of science? Fossil dating is the systematic method of determining the rock's age, either by logical relative dating or technological radiometric means. Think of dating as logically finding the pieces of the jigsaw puzzle together, except that they are stacked in a logical and chronological order. Also, if all else fails, you have technology. Just analyze how dry and old those pieces are, measure the amount of their radioactive substances. These two very different methods are called relative dating and absolute dating or radiometric dating. Relative dating determines the chronological order of events without determining how really old they are. Just, you know, who's in order? Who's the first, second, third, and the last one? Radiometric or absolute dating measures the amount of radioactive traces and determining its exact age using technology. So let's start first with the relative dating. Here you can see the progression of events starting from green, yellow, red, violet, and, you know, deep pink. So you can see there that there is a relative order of events. Relative dating is the science of determining its order without knowing their true absolute age. We use it in earth science to correlate one rock or fossil to another. And relative dating follows ideas. These are the following. Principle of superposition, original horizontality, cross-cutting relationships, and the idea of index fossils. Let's start first with superposition. Nicolo Steno proposed that each rock layer is younger than the one below it. The oldest rock is always at the bottom, and the youngest rock is always on the topmost layer. You can see that in the Grand Canyon, and you can actually put them in order how old uh, the, the oldest layer and the youngest layer in this rock formation. And generally, it is the deeper we dig, the farther back in time we see. Another idea to follow is Horizontality means that layers of sediment are always in a horizontal position, whatever happens. The angles can be changed by wind, other factors like tectonic movements, earthquakes, or even plate boundaries. But the idea stays the same. They are always in horizontal position. Cross-cutting relationship states that vertical cuts or fault lines are always younger than the horizontal layers they have affected. Here you can see that they were yellow and green layers and then there was an igneous intrusion and a fault line afterwards. So the layers were the first ones to form and afterwards the igneous intrusion and next is the fault line. Last concept in relative dating is the idea of index fossils. Index fossils are distinguished widely known fossils that are used to tell the approximate age of the rock. They were widespread, short-lived, and they were propolis when they were living. When you see fossils like these, it tells you really how far back in time those fossils are. For example, our trilobites. Uh, trilobites are great index fossils because they used to exist before the dawn of fishes. It was during the Cambrian period wherein tr trilobites flourished, and then after that, we don't know what happened next. 
There are distinguished fossils from era to era, and they are used to tell the approximate age of the rock. Examples of these are ammonites. Ammonites are used to identify fossils of the Mesozoic era, meaning on the age of dinosaurs. So if you see ammonite fossils, it means they are of the same era as dinosaurs. Corals live during the Paleozoic era, so meaning they are very far behind. Raptolites as well, echinoids, they have their own time signatures. So that's how index fossils are used. When you see fossils like that, it tells you the era where they live. We can analogize the concept of relative dating to our laundry. We can know the deeper those are, the further back in time those clothes are used. Like this one. You can also see the blanket there. The blanket that you change. You remember on Thursday, you can mark the index laundry or the index fossil. Everything up to the blanket or above the blanket are later than Thursday. So again, relative dating is like having clues on the laundry. When did I use those clothes? So how about the fossils like the Homo sapiens, hominids? that are very close apart. Do we know how exactly they are apart chronologically? When the layers of rocks are not accurate enough for archaeologists, they turn to radioactivity. So let's define radioactivity first. It's the releasing of particles and energy from an unstable atom. So remember that we can use this concept of radioactivity because they have their own specific time wherein they release their particles and energy. By knowing how much radioactivity has occurred, radioactivity has been released, we can have clues on how old the rocks are. So radiometric dating is calculating accurately the age of fossil or rock by comparing the amounts of radioactive traces. Living organisms have their supply of carbon-14, a radioactive isotope. Don't worry, it's harmless. And when a plant or animal dies, the amount of carbon-14 decreases at a predictable year rate. So basically, we count how much carbon-14 is left and have a clue on its age based on its life. So what's the half-life? Half-life is the amount of time for a radioactive compound to lose half of its substances. So if the half-life of carbon-14 is 5,700 years, meaning it will be half of carbon-14 after 5,700. One half of one half is one fourth. It will be one fourth after 11,400 years. One fourth times one half is one eighth. It will be one eighth after 17,100 years. And so on and so on. So we can calculate the amount of carbon-14 left and determining its portion, we can actually guess its age or calculate its age. Remember that carbon-14 can dissipate quickly. When we say quickly, within 50,000 years, okay? So it can be only used for fossils which are very recent. And for any other organisms later than that, we can use other isotopes like plutonium and radon and uranium. So how do we apply these fossils and dating concepts to more practical aspects of science? Social science goes hand in hand with natural science to uncover these problems and issues. How far away were the primitive human civilizations? What organisms that are batch mates or of the same age as dinosaurs still exist? What human mysteries like what are they made for? And other questions we have regarding our prehistoric past. Still a lot to discover, but at least you as a student are aware of how they discover things. And fossil dating, relative and radiometric dating is not actually rocket science and it can be explained in simple terms. Now, let us summarize our reviewer for today. Fossil dating is the systematic method of determining the rock's age, either by relative or radiometric dating. Relative dating determines the chronological order of rocks without determining the absolute specific age. Radiometric dating measures the amount of radioactive traces to determine its exact age. Relative dating uses principles such as superposition, original horizontality, cross-cutting relationships, and index fossils as clues. Archaeologists use a much more accurate way of dating rocks via radiometric dating. Radiometric dating measures the radioactive traces in a rock to determine its exact age. So let's test your knowledge for this video reviewer. Please pause this video to try to answer this 5-item short quiz. When you're finished, resume the video 
to check your answers. The video resumes in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Here are the answers for the test your knowledge portion. Thank you for watching this video reviewer and I hope you have refreshed your lessons on this episode, The Absolute and Relative Taping. I am Teacher Guillen Del Atalia and see you next time on the next Earth and Life Science Rewind. Video reviewers for Earth and Life Science. Oh,